Thank you for joining me today for this episode of Infinite Hope. I think it's episode 18. Okay, here we go. Uh, so this article was really interesting, sent to me by Kai MFS. Uh, he's a good friend and a supporter of this show and this channel. Thank you so much, Kai. Says, uh, 4,200 year old queen's identity among, um, among remarkable new finds in Egypt. So they found some new stuff. Uh, and uh, I'm going to watch this video as well, but uh, there's details in the story that I think uh, we should read as well. Uh, Egypt Ministry of Antiques has revealed details of the latest landmark discoveries to emerge from uh, Squara Necropolis, south of Cairo. The vast burial grounds sits in what was once Memphis, the capital of ancient Egypt. Let's watch this, let's watch this cool little video that goes along with this story. Archaeologists in Egypt are celebrating a newly unearthed tomb as a one-of-a-kind find. The hidden resting place for an Egyptian royal priest has been untouched for about 4,400 years. It's covered with exceptionally well-preserved statues and hieroglyphics. The discovery was made last Thursday in the Saqqara Pyramid Complex just south of Cairo. Jonathan Vigliotti shows us how it's the latest in a series of big finds in Egypt this year. It's an ancient treasure chest spread out over two levels, a tomb so perfectly preserved so has been cool. called the most significant discovery in decades. More than two dozen statues guard the chamber and drawings of a family are spread throughout like an Egyptian photo album. The walls covered in carvings depicting some of their favorite activities, hunting, musical performances, and even sailing. Their modern day outings set in stone and vibrantly painted more than 4,400 years ago. The discovery today, it's one of the most important one for me, because number one, it's almost intact too. Number two, it's all kingdom. Dr. Mustafa Waziri's team believed the tomb was the final resting place of a royal priest named Wate, who apparently really loved his mother. He mentioned the name of his mother almost everywhere here. More than one what? dozen discoveries have been made in Egypt, That's weird. including a sarcophagus in Luxor, an ancient necropolis, and a tomb of a high priestess. These ancient secrets, good for both history and Egypt's struggling tourism industry. Archaeologists are now hopeful they'll find Wate's sarcophagus, believed to be still hidden within the tomb. For CBS This Morning, Wow, Vigliotti. that is so cool. I mean, if it wasn't a pandemic, I would definitely uh, want to visit Egypt one day and check out all these tombs and stuff like that. Um, inmates uh, work together to raise $32,000 for student tuition. Uh, this is a human story. I have a, a bunch of them. And as you guys know, I'm a huge advocate human connection, empathy, and all that good stuff, because I believe that's, that's our way out. That's our way out of this darkness. Um, and I believe in redemption stories, I really do. Uh, and, and this really resonated with me, so. For the past seven years, students from the Palma School in Salinas, California, have been part of a book club at an unlikely place, Soledad Prison. And former inmate Jason Bryant says, the discussions went beyond plot lines and protagonists. When I encountered the young men, I was just encouraged to see the, the, the good choices that they were making at, at such a young age when I was not. When he was 20 years old, Bryant was sentenced to 26 years to life for his involvement in a 1999 robbery that resulted in a shooting death. Ouch. Behind bars, Bryant was looking for ways to be of service. Then, at book club, he heard about Ernest Gordon's miracle on the River Kwai. In the book, prisoners of war created a culture of sacrifice, and they called it mucking for each other. Inspired by the POWs, Bryant and his co-defendant hatched a plan. And he leaned over and he said, that is exactly what we need to do. We need to muck for a young man. The brothers in blue, as they were called, decided to raise money from other prisoners to create a scholarship fund for a Palma student in need. Almost 800 inmates, many working jobs like sweeping, clerking, or making furniture, raised $32,000 wow. over the course of three years. So the base pay for incarcerated people in the state of California is eight cents an hour. Wow. An hour. An hour. And 
incarcerated people were so drawn to the idea of going a mile deep in a young man's life that they were giving up their month's pay to contribute. They were anywhere from 50 cents to $100 here and there. Mia Marisi and Jim Micheletti founded the literature program called Exercises in Empathy. When students go in, justifiably, they're, they're a little bit afraid. They go in thinking monster, and they come out thinking a man, a human being. And they've, they've done bad things, but there's no throwaway people here. When they learned yeah. about the inmates' plan, they knew exactly who should receive the scholarship. Before his sophomore year, Cy Green's father had a heart transplant. His mother had an accident and lost her vision, and both parents lost their jobs. Wow. That was a financial burden um, with all the medical bills and stuff. Green was shocked to learn inmates who he'd never met had come together to pay for his tuition so he could continue going to private school. I was mind blown and then immediately I was just grateful. Green is now 19 and in college. He graduated from Palma School last year with Bryant by his side. Is there any level of personal That's redemption wonderful. in getting involved in something like this? I mean, you're talking to someone who committed a crime that cannot be undone, um, the harm. So uh, I don't know about redemption. I can say this. I know that those of us who have truly transformed our lives are committed to add value in any way that we possibly can. After 20 years behind bars, last March, California Governor Gavin Newsom granted Brian clemency. Backdrop. Yeah, I think so. He's using his second chance to mentor students like Cy Green. No, he also has a responsibility to continue paying it forward. And having that, I guess, them in the, in the back of my mind all the time, they put all this effort and all this work into me. So I have to honor that and carry that legacy on. For CBS this morning, That's great. Franca, paying Dallas. it forward. I love that. I love the story. Life can be difficult and like, you know, you can you can get caught up, make terrible mistakes. And then, you know, some people like, you know, do learn from their lesson. Now, there was another one. There's another human connection story. Um, and this was cool, too, because, uh, you know, you can make a difference in someone's life. And, uh, oh, actually, wait, since I shared this one, let's, let's do this, this story first. Okay. Uh, this one, this one's about a preacher. Um, it's not a woman, it's a man. So this one uh, says a neighborhood of friends is restoring bikes for free. Uh, they're led by Anglican priest, Robbie Pruitt, who found his love for biking in Haiti. Um, now we're going to watch the story, but basically to give you a lowdown, uh, this gentleman, um, he, he had his bike stolen and then he decided to, instead of being pissed off, he decided to start fixing bikes instead. Um, and I thought that that was really cool. Uh, so yeah, let's listen to his story. Welcome back. So a few years ago, Anglican priest Robbie Pruitt and the Church of the Epiphany took a trip to Haiti and Pruitt has since left the Church of the Epiphany for the Church of the Holy Spirit. Well, one thing has stayed the same, and that's his love for biking. WDVM's Rebecca Burnett explains how he's putting a hobby to good use. When Pruitt works on his bike in the backyard, he's rarely alone. The neighborhood kids uh, saw me working on my brakes on my Diamondback. I was replacing disc brakes, and I asked them if they wanted to learn how to fix brakes, and they said, sure. They kind of reminded me of, of my days in Haiti and the mountain biking ministry at, at uh, Church of the Epiphany in Herndon and kind of got me back into this. He fixed up their bikes, but he didn't stop there. In about a month, he's restored over 70 of them for free. So one of my favorite um, verses of the Bible is Revelation 21, 5. It says, uh, behold, I make all things new. And so it's like, I feel like I'm a part of making something old new again or something abandoned usable again. He hasn't done it alone, though. A handful of teens lend a hand, a big relief after the virtual school day. Honestly, it feels great, you know? Being able to help people during this whole situation, it's just, you know, 
really good experience. It's kind of gratifying. Uh-huh. I mean, knowing that you have like this new skill that you've learned um, that can be used for forever. And if they ever need the moral support, those neighborhood kids still check in. It's pretty it's cool. cool. It's pretty awesome. Oh, they're so cute. Especially during COVID and these hard times, it's very nice uh, for people like Robbie in the world. Reporting in Ashburn, Rebecca Burnett, WGBM 25. Now, one of the things I really enjoyed about this video is what this girl specifically said because it's kind of gratifying. I mean, knowing that you have like this new skill that you've learned um, that can be used for forever. And just knowing a skill that you've learned that you can use forever. And I think that's really important because keeping active is important. So, uh, this article reads, just go for a walk. Studies show normal walking can add years to your life and reduce disease symptoms. So with all this stuff going on with the pandemic and everything, uh, we got to figure out ways to keep healthy. And apparently walking is one of them. Uh, walking can literally add years to your life. I'm sorry, I have to check something. Uh, walking can literally add years to your life and incorporating walks after meals can improve all manners of chronic metabolistic, uh, metabolic disorders. Hardly news, the body of research of walking was augmented with another study which took place in 20, 2003 and 2006 to 2006, but whose results were only just published recently, showing that people who took 8 thousand steps per day had a 51 percent re- reduced risk of death than those who took 4,000 4, steps a day a study of ta- uh, type 2 diabetes chinese diabetes found that walking on a treadmill at 60 percent of max heart rate for just 20 minutes after dinner decreased the post meal blood glucose spike average and peak and improved how glucose was regulated for 12 hours uh a post meal so that's the other thing you don't necessarily have to go outside like if you live in a really cold environment or like you know you just don't want to go out for a walk because what for whatever reasons you have you know you're living in a dangerous neighborhood let's say get yourself a treadmill if you can if you can afford one get one because then that way you are you, you do the walk without having to go outside and do it although outside has its own uh you know really good benefits as well like strong benefits like breathing oxygen especially if you're walking around without a mask uh you know breathing oxygen is really good getting in touch with nature all sorts of things like that you know like just breathing air listening to the sound of the bird the birds the wind you know just getting in touch with nature all that stuff helps um okay so woman gifts car to teen who had to walk seven miles to work each day Well, with so much happening in the world, there is still a lot of kindness out there. Earlier this evening, a woman surprised a deserving teen with a car after learning the young Cobb County man walked seven miles to and from work every day. Fox News' Eric Perry was there for the emotional surprise and has the story. Jaden Sutton tells me every day he makes that seven mile journey to work, rain or shine, hot or cold. The high schooler was just simply speechless at the kindness of one woman. I knew that if I had to walk to work every day to get a car, that's what I was going to do. I walk home every day, that's what I was going to do. Walking is something all too familiar for Cobb County High School senior Jaden Sutton. When I get off school about around 3.30 and get off the bus, I go straight to work. I just realized this kid's probably really healthy because he was walking all the time. (laughs) And now he has a car. He's not going to be walking as much. Uh Uh-oh. Walk straight to work. Go to work, work for like six, seven hours, and walk straight home. Day and night, Sutton makes the seven mile journey to his job at a restaurant, hoping to save money and buy a car. Sometimes not getting home until nearly midnight. I'm so excited! We were there as he got the surprise of a lifetime. First of all, let me say this is my car. This is my car! It all happened thanks to the kindness of one woman. Just real grateful and I'm on you. I was just walking to work and it was just like you came out of the room. Lavonda Wright has been working for weeks trying to make this happen. Wright first met Jaden as he was racing down Brownsville Road and Powder Springs to work. He was walking really fast down the road and so my son 
stopped me and tapped me. He was like, Mom, I think that's Jay Jaden. Right, ended up taking Jaden to work that day, but couldn't get him off her mind afterwards. She knew she had to do something. I shared the story on my social media page. Um, it had thousands of views. People started donating, they started giving. Ultimately, a GoFundMe was created and over $7,000 donated. Right, came across the Nally Honda deal. See, social media can be used for good. It doesn't have to be just used for, you know, not good. Dealership in Union City, where the general manager agreed to drop the price to fit the budget. I'm real. I'm real. And as he smiles from ear to ear with new keys in hand, the two now have an unbreakable bond and friendship. And I, I, love Aww. You. I just want to thank you so much. He's so you don't even understand how you so welcome. And this really all came at such a great time. Jaden's mother actually came into some hard times and having car issues. This is really a story about faith and perseverance. I'll break that down when you join us on News Edge at 11. Eric Perry, Fox 5 News. Well, that was, uh, that was cute. I thought that was a cute story. Um, okay, so on to the next story here. This one, um, so this is the, okay, here's the thing. We all know the coups going on in the world. It sucks. It's a terrible situation. I uh, I hate it. I despise what's going on with the coup. And um, it's just one of those things, though. And I, I and I try to keep it on the positive side uh, on this channel, especially for this show. So I try not to bring it up because you know it's definitely something that's like it's a Debbie Downer. It brings everybody down. But it is the reality of things, you know, so it's, it's something that's happening in our world and sometimes we have to address it. Um, and so I found this story, which I thought was really cool. Uh, somebody who is capable of doing something, actually doing something about helping people in his community and uh, around the United States. Um, this gentleman who I knew nothing about when I, before I found this story, which is another cool thing about this show that I'm doing is it's teaching me a lot about uh, some people, you know? I, I, I didn't even know this person existed until today uh, or yesterday. Uh, David Portnoy, his name is David Portnoy. He is an American and internet celebrity blogger and founder of the sports and pop culture blog, Barstool Sports. And now he has gone and done something amazing with his life because uh, he's he's you know he, he's got some money and he uh he he's a new yorker i believe and he wants to help people so he decided to make this thing called the barstool fund where he is rescuing small businesses now um i'm going to share with you this this video on his uh on his uh achievement uh which i thought was amazing and needs to be shared far and wide. We share audio. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Decades of blood, swear, sweat, and tears building. They've done whatever. They've scratched and clawed. And now a few politicians in New York City's like, and you're done. We're shutting down. No indoor time. How do you expect these people to survive? What are people gonna go out to dinner now in ice cold temperatures? sad well he took action and he's uh, just as outraged as you are so for barstool sports founder and president dave portnoy what started as a rant that you just saw, heard about covid 19 restrictions in new york city has turned into a full-blown national movement to save small business across this great country and help the fastest growing fund you can imagine barstool's fund to help out small businesses i've never seen anything like this it's now raised nearly 30 million dollars just to help small business owners survive the pandemic since our first piece aired on Tuesday, more than $1.6 million have poured into the fund. Wow. Here is part two to learn more about what it's like being Dave Portnoy. That's a lot of money. You got called out. You were complaining about what's happened in the city, the shutdown, we bent the curve, we bent the curve. Who called you out? It was uh, a guy, Marcus Limonis who I'd never heard of, but he is the camper's world. He's like a billionaire. And he said, do something. Right. He said, if you start a fund 
uh, put 500 grand of your own money into it, I'll match it, is what he said. We want to help. After this payroll, I don't have any more money to keep my points. Chris, you have no idea how much this needs to the entire restaurant. Very excited to help. Oh my God, you're absolutely amazing. When you decide to take action, you started meeting these people, and they're, they're, they remind you a lot of yourself, though. Grinders, whatever it takes to be successful, get out of my way. I'm not looking for a pat on the back, just a chance. Yeah, you know, that's small business owners. An entrepreneur or a small business owner says, I'd rather work 100 hours and, and know success is because of me as opposed to somebody else. Ironically, because of the pandemic, that's what got ripped away from people. We're about to come on one of the business owners that was selected to hit the criteria, the bar stool criteria to be funded. Yes, Johnny's Luncheonette. Why? He had a moving story. My name is uh, John Pilato. Um, this is so moving. In the middle of the pandemic, as you can see, there's no indoor dining. Um, and he was struggling. He took a picture of the diner. It was empty. He was going through personal issues a little bit. But the whole story just kind of resonated. And I do remember the call. He was super appreciative. You know, we need the help right now. We're going to need help for, uh, for rent. What's your brand? Oh, no, Johnny. Nice to meet you. I said I haven't met you yet. Nice to meet you. God bless you, man. No, I'm glad we could help. Oh, Jay, yeah. What have you been going through? Been uh, struggling for uh, quite some time now since, uh, you know, they announced uh, everything back in March. I closed for five months. I uh, basically thought uh, that was it. The cold weather settled in, indoor dining closed, and then it just, uh, just deepened the wounds. So how did you find out about Barstool and what they're doing? My dad passed away in uh, in December, early December, and wow. uh, yeah, so that was just like another punch in the face there. Ah, oh, that's that really so sad. Me. And uh, you know, I'm looking through Instagram, and on Christmas Eve, <laughs> I'm at work, and it was, it was just dead. And I'm like, you know what? I'm here over 20 years. Uh, I started it out. with my dad told me everything i know this is so emotional for me when i watch it the first time and, uh, he just passed away last week i took my phone out you know i didn't even see what i looked like because i didn't know i was going to yeah. be on national tv <laughs> and i said babe you know this is it this is the story there's nobody around you know we need help you know i started crying you know my dad and everything and i sent it out so the next day was Christmas Day. John. Oh my God. I said, I got some good news for you. We saw the video. You're the exact type of guy we want to help. So we're going to be there for you. Oh my God, you just made my day. Oh, yeah. can you Better imagine? That's so I'm cool. So happy. I'm glad we could do it. I don't need, I feel like I'm dreaming right now, man. You know, I was three months behind on rent. And uh, when this all happens, everything just happens so fast. It is what we're trying to help. It's like a small business. He's been here forever. What's your message to the American people? To every small business out there, uh, don't give up hope. Um, you, you know, didn't. we're all suffering here. We're all together. And I'm fortunate enough to have Barstool. We're all in this together. Me and my business. And it's not only me, you know, my house is tied into this too. You know it. You don't even no, have to I, say I appreciate it. it. Hey, vaccines on the way. And that means your customers and businesses are gonna be standing up soon. Yes. We hope. We I hope. We can take a seat here. <laughs> when you see the reactions of these business owners, oh, I like how he was like, We hope. Oh, that's uh that speaks loads about the stress yeah, just about wash about away things. and they break <laughs> down. That's you can't ignore that. It doesn't matter who you are. You see what they're going through, the struggle, yeah. everything. Yeah, struggle's um, real, man. The other side of this pandemic, and it, it, I think, again, that's why this thing has gotten so big. When we started this fund, I never dreamed it would in three weeks be. I mean, he just, uh, it's, it's, it's crazy. Love you guys, and uh, I will catch you guys next time. Love me, bye-bye, outro, bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.